Max Verstappen's finally been beaten in a race he finished in 2024, and the shock winner wasn't driving a Ferrari either. Take a bow, McLaren's Lando Norris. There's no doubt Norris got a huge slice of good fortune to help him over the line in the Miami Grand Prix. Without Kevin Magnussen wiping out Logan Sargent's Williams and triggering a safety car, at just the point all the other front-running drivers apart from Norris had made their pit stops, Norris would have had to overtake some cars in the way, chase Verstappen down, and do the almost impossible thing of actually overtaking a Red Bull for victory. So this was just a lucky result for a driver and a team that didn't really deserve to win, right? Well, it's not quite as simple as that. McLaren had hopes of winning at some point this year, but it was slightly out of nowhere that in Miami it suddenly had a car that looked genuinely capable of running with the lead Red Bull, not just beating the slower second one. In fact, its heavily upgraded car looked so fast at times that Red Bull was genuinely worried about Verstappen being beaten in a straight fight. Norris had to drive incredibly well to recover from an opening stint on the back foot and a very difficult weekend building up to the Grand Prix itself, but Red Bull and Verstappen also needed to be below their usual best. This was probably Verstappen's least convincing weekend of the season so far on a track where he absolutely destroyed the field in 2023. Apart from when his car let him down in Australia, Verstappen's been pretty much imperious in every race so far in 2024, but Miami wasn't like that. Yes, he got pole for the sprint, won the sprint, got pole for the Grand Prix and led half of the Grand Prix too before that safety car showed up. But the margins were very tight all weekend and Verstappen never looked at ease with his Red Bull. Once Norris got ahead, he was just plain faster. Since F1 introduced these ground effect regulations for 2022, you can count the number of races Verstappen's been genuinely outpaced without using all the fingers on one hand. Norris pulled more than seven seconds on Verstappen after the safety car restart in Miami. And even before he got ahead, Norris was catching Verstappen when both were running in clean air. It's possible that Verstappen was hamstrung by some underfloor damage picked up when he ran wide at the chicane and struck a plastic bollard, but Max himself clearly didn't want to detract from Norris's pace because he reckoned his car and his speed was the same after that incident. As for Norris, he was so confident in the pace of his upgraded McLaren that he could run a much longer first stint than the others. The safety car intervention was then decisive and was so perfect for Norris as it didn't come out of the pits in time to pick him up, so he gained even more time on Verstappen and the rest and guaranteed he'd rejoin in the lead. But McLaren would still have been a threat for Red Bull to monitor without the safety car, even with Norris facing the prospect of being back behind several other cars again. And he was tracking for at least a podium before things swung his way even more. There was forewarning of McLaren's prodigious speed during sprint qualifying on Friday. Norris was fastest of all in the first two segments of that session, and the lap time he set to top SQ2 wasn't beaten by anyone until Verstappen and Charles Leclerc went a few hundredths of a second quicker in Q2 the following day. That in itself is incredibly unusual. Verstappen was having to work uncharacteristically hard to extract lap time from his car, and was constantly surprised to be somehow ending up fastest in the sessions that mattered. The Miami track was running hot all weekend, close to 50 degrees Celsius at times. It's also a relatively smooth street-style circuit, featuring long straights, lots of slow corners, and not many fast ones. Pirelli elected not to bring its softest C5 compound to this race, which meant the cars had to work the tyres hard to get them up to temperature. But the combination of a low-grip surface and cars running trimmed-out downforce levels for better straight-line speed meant the tyres were never really working properly. They were sliding across the track rather than gripping it, overheating the surface of the tyre and then creating a negative spiral of low grip that made the line between a fast lap and a complete mess absolutely razor thin. Everyone, including Verstappen, was battling against this paradox that driving carefully and within the artificial limit imposed by the tyres was actually faster than pushing harder, as the drivers usually do as the race weekend progresses in the expectation the track will offer more grip. This track, in combination with the tyres, just refused to do that. It caught Norris out too, and explains why in a car that was clearly quick enough to challenge for pole in sprint qualifying, he only qualified ninth, and for the main race, only qualified fifth. What we saw in Sunday's Grand Prix, particularly after the safety car, was a further manifestation of that phenomenon. The Red Bull is built to look after the tyres and protect them from degradation over a race stint. It usually struggles to fire up the fronts as a consequence of this, particularly in qualifying. Miami was more about generating tyre temperature without sliding around and overheating the tyre surface. It was clear once Verstappen had to restart the race from second place on the hards that he wasn't going to be able to get those front tyres working properly and balance the two axles. The McLaren, by contrast, is much better at firing up the tyres and giving them core temperature. We saw this clearly when Norris claimed sprint race pole in wet conditions in China. 
Without the need to push to the absolute limit in the race in Miami, Norris was in a much happier place than he was in qualifying, able to get his tyres working relatively well compared to Verstappen and then able to pull away to victory once he got track position over the Red Bull. McLaren's immense development trajectory has been key to its turnaround since this race last year when both drivers were eliminated in Q1 at a track that ruthlessly exposed its car's weaknesses. This season's result was at least partly possible because of McLaren's first major package of the season. The list of new parts on the MCL38 was extensive, spanning the car's nose to tail, under and over. A new front wing, revised front suspension geometry and front brake ducts give what is claimed to be better airflow control and there are changes to the rear wing and brake duct winglets to better exploit that. The bodywork and engine cover have been reshaped with a new side pod inlet that required changes to the cooling system to accommodate and a reshaped coke bottle section towards the back. These work in conjunction with a new underfloor. This was all conceived to deliver what the team believes will be a very significant increase in load in all conditions, with even the front suspension tweaks being predominantly an aerodynamic benefit. McLaren didn't envisage this as quite as big a step as its season transforming 2023 upgrade packages which really started in Austria and brought about a second in lap time over the whole season. But it was anticipated to be a good gain and that is what McLaren saw. Ironically the McLaren package probably didn't show its full value on a track like Miami. The McLaren still has a slow corner weakness and these upgrades did start to address that but as we've explained previously that is a year long project that won't be complete until 2025. So while Norris was very competitive on a track that has a lot of awkward slow corners, that was mainly because of McLaren running a smaller rear wing than normal and optimizing its mechanical setup for the slowest parts of the lap. This helped offset the deficit it has had by not being as aerodynamically efficient as the likes of Red Bull. But within that, there was something that the upgrades played into. Developing areas like the floor and side pods mean the car has more downforce than before, but in a more efficient way because it's not just from bigger wings. That extra load being produced by other parts of the car is what allowed McLaren to run a lower drag rear wing to be stronger on the straights while still being competitive in the corners. Norris was running the full upgrade in Miami, while Oscar Piastri's spec was jokingly described by McLaren CEO Zach Brown as upgrade light before he gets the full version at Imola. That's the next race and is actually when both cars were originally due to get this package and it was a massive effort by McLaren to bring it forward. Norris and McLaren boss Andrea Stella credit part of this performance to the development, so it is absolutely conceivable that without this early upgrade, the car would simply not have been quick enough to cash in on the opportunity this race presented. But that doesn't mean this McLaren is ready to be a regular Red Bull beater. Verstappen had his own issues and Stella's not comfortable stating that the Miami race was a real representation of McLaren's future pace. He reckons McLaren needs another upgrade like this to fight Red Bull consistently, and that's not coming anytime soon. But this at least was a much greater validation of the team's development than engine supplier Mercedes had, because it had its own smaller upgrade in Miami, looked as underwhelming as usual, and now has barely half the points McLaren has in the championship. Norris's win came at the 110th attempt, and he had recently taken the unwelcome record of most podiums without a victory. Really, that should never have been the case. His first win should have come way back in Sochi in 2021, when McLaren misjudged the situation, didn't anticipate a second more aggressive downpour and Norris stayed out on slick tyres in the wet, so slid off the road and lost the win. That was the start of a strange narrative that Norris was basically a choke artist who couldn't deliver the result on the big occasions. But there hasn't been an opportunity for Norris to win a Grand Prix since, and Norris actually did a brilliant emphatic takedown of the criticism he's seen about him. He admitted this win is a weight off his shoulders and Stella reckons the same goes for McLaren as well because the pressure to produce a car capable of winning and then Norris actually doing it has grown over time. But Norris also took aim at his Lando no wins critics, joking that he usually enjoys liking all the criticism and nasty comments he gets on Instagram and that proving them wrong makes this victory all the sweeter. When Norris looks back on the time between Russia 2021 and now, he says that he sees missed pole positions, missed podiums and a missed sprint race win in Qatar. He admits that, he knows he's hardly been perfect and he's often extremely critical of himself for making errors in qualifying in particular. But he really doesn't believe he's blown a golden opportunity to win a Grand Prix and we agree. There have been many occasions where he's driven exceptionally well and been rewarded with a podium but nothing more. After all, Norris has finished second to Verstappen seven times in the past 12 months. All he needed on those days was for something to trip up the Red Bull and he'd have won, but that slice of fortune never arrived until now. Norris sincerely feels this was the first time the stars aligned for him. 
Stella believes that too, adding that McLaren has finally provided Norris with a car capable of winning and he's done exactly that at the first realistic opportunity. 